Uh, what do you think of the purpose and the timing of uh, Theresa May's visit to the United States at this time? Well, I think it's quite significant that the first leader, uh, President Trump, has uh, invited to Washington is our prime minister. I think there are clearly going to be three or four matters of uh, discussion. The first, clearly, international trade, uh, Britain's position uh, in the world post-Brexit uh, and the ramifications of America first. I think there'll be a long discussion about uh, America's role internationally and wanting to speak to the president about America's role within NATO. There'll be a discussion on the fight of, about international terrorism. And I think there will also be quite a long discussion, um, probably Mrs May trying to get some idea of actually what President Trump is going to do. We've had a lot of talk during his election campaign, but analysts both uh, in the US and across the world, I think, are struggling to see exactly what, how that is going to translate into policy and into legislative program. Mm -hmm. Now, this visit comes at an interesting timing. Several things are happening at the same time. We just heard Theresa May pronouncing her plan for Brexit. We have understood that that is more a hard Brexit than a soft Brexit. Secondly, we have the Supreme Court ruling that she cannot bypass the Parliament to trigger the negotiation. Every step she goes, she has to make things very clear to the Parliament. And then we have the uh, reporting of the accident that happened last year concerning the Trident missile system. Uh, what kind of background are these events providing for this trip? Whether they will have any um, bearing on whether this meeting is going to be successful or not? Well, I think clearly uh, Mrs May has set out her plan, uh, and I think I disagree with you. I don't think it showed either a tendency for hard Brexit or indeed anything else. She set out a negotiating plan. Many of us, I think, see that as more pragmatic. What she'll be able to achieve, of course, will be uh, in the process of the negotiations that will start sometime after the 31st of March this year. But I think it was a plan which set out her uh, position. I think many of you should notice the quite um, friendly and, I think, accommodating tone that the speech was set in. Uh, secondly, I think that the article ruling by the Supreme Court yesterday makes a, a difference to the extent that the government will now have to give Parliament a bit longer to discuss how we leave. Mm -hmm. The conversation, of course, is not about whether we're going to leave. That's been settled. So in that backdrop, uh, clearly there will be a different international uh, trade environment for which both the Prime Minister and the President will want to have discussions. Well, we know that, um, by the way, this hard Brexit or soft Brexit was not my judgment. Basically, we're hearing a lot of uh, media reports analyzing it, saying because she uh, pictured a, uh, a, to leave the single market. No, you're correct. I mean, the media <laughs> chose to frame it in one way. OK, but you don't, you don't think, agree with that. That's OK. But um, at the same well, time... Well, I, I think that people ought to read the text. I think people ought to read the text. She's, she's looking for a way to maintain access to the single market. She's looking for a way to stay in the customs union. That is not... She's not saying that we're out of those, uh, out of those immediately. What she's saying is she wants to find a way that Britain can do a comprehensive trade deal, including still access. Uh, and I think prior to that speech, if you'd heard those remarks, you wouldn't have regarded that as a hard Brexit option. The hard Brexit option is to say, give us trade at our current uh, position or else we'll leave and do other deals. So I think it was briefed cleverly, but actually the reality was a much more pragmatic speech. Let's come back to Theresa May's meeting with US President Donald Trump. Now, many people, again, in the media are associating it with the kind of Thatcher-Reagan era relationship between the UK and the United States. Do you see any difference or do you not agree with me on this either? Or with the press on this either? Well, I think the world has moved on significantly since that era. Clearly, um, if you think about that era, one of the things that brought both Mrs. Thatcher and President Reagan together was the threat of what was happening potentially behind the Iron Curtain, bringing down democracy, bringing democracy back to those states in Eastern Europe. That backdrop has clearly changed. Uh, I think that the potential 
uh, element that is different now also is President Trump's stated America first policy mm -hmm. and the reality of what that might mean for international security. Um, and so I think it's a very different uh, international backdrop. I hope that Mrs. May, and I'm sure what she'll be aiming to achieve is to understand more clearly exactly what President Trump is going to be doing in his four years of office with yeah. his program. Yeah, but yeah. also persuading President Trump that uh, America stepping back from the world uh, international stage in the way it has done previously would be a bad thing for international security, international trade, let's, and international progress. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, so I'm sure that she'll be wanting to impress upon him an international nature to America's policy. Let's see how he takes those message. Another very interesting uh, message he has sent to the British people and to the UK leadership maybe is to who he thinks would make a perfect British ambassador to the United States. He mentioned Nigel Farage, who played a key role in Britain's vote to leave the European Union. Do you think um, the UK leadership would buy that at all? Um. Generally, international leaderships are better if they keep out of the domestic policy decisions <laughs> of other countries. Obviously, they're welcome to comment on them if they feel that's impressive. Uh, but I don't think that's a very good idea on the whole for anyone. And therefore, uh, I think uh, Mrs. May quite rightly will say we have an excellent ambassador in, in Washington. Uh, that's likely to remain. Uh, and if we need a new ambassador to Washington, uh, I can't imagine Nigel Farage will be anywhere close to that, to the top of Mrs. May's list. Okay, thank you very much, Stephen Hammond, a Conservative Party MP, joining us from London.